Oh, where to start? E everything you need to know about Kraut is in your handout. If you'd like one, I have a few spare in my bag. Um, I come here quite a lot taking people round because it's what I do. And it's important that people come and see places like this. Now, there's not a lot you can do here, but it's an act of witness. And the problem we have about the whole cyber domain is it doesn't exist. And it's really difficult to get your head around something which doesn't exist, which is what I hope I got through last night about data. Because really data doesn't exist. It's just mag magnet magnetism on a drum or electric charge in a transistor. It only gives it meaning when it's in people's heads. And so bringing people here and witnessing what's here, it, it's that same process. It creates something in people's heads. Uh, before I went to <coughs> sleep last night, I, I listened to some music to try and chill out and relax. And uh, there's a, a strange American band called Bad Wolves who've just done a cover version of the 1994 Cranberries hit Zombie. But they've subtly changed it. Instead of the chorus bit, bit, well, the bridge to the chorus being their tanks and their bombs and their bombs and their guns, what Bad Wolves has done is their tanks and their bombs and their guns and their drones. And, and it's that kind of very soft, surreptitious, cultural influence is how we get through to people. We just like to bring people here because I can bring people here and a little while later they've done something beautiful just because of the witnessing experience of coming here. Anyway, I should be in Quaker meeting, that's the end of the ministry. <laughs> yeah? Well, I haven't found anybody else to take over yet. Uh, this is Brackley Landing Ground as it was originally set up and it, before the war it was uh, training for air, air pilots. Um, on the far side beyond those trees there's actually some listed Spitfire shelters because they used to station fighters here and now they're listed buildings they can't destroy them because they're of cultural significance. Uh, the site's on a ridge so it's really difficult to see. The best place to see it is from the top of the hill over there but we couldn't possibly get the bus across the field. Uh, but, but that's where the photos in my presentations are taken from. You can't quite see it but where that mast is that's the communication centre. Edward Snowden worked there for a couple of weeks oh. and oh, wow. um, oh. behind that next to it is the intelligence and operations centre where it is, it is a site within a site. It's where all the real stuff happens. All what you see here, all these buildings, the, the big building over there, that's the administration building for the 422nd Air Base Group. That's all the everyday USAF activity of running bases, logistics. There's a store over there, there's a fire station, housing, and, and as Will pointed out yesterday, the baseball pitch. Hmm. But the real stuff happens at the site within a site, which is where that mast is over there. And then the other two security areas are these here. This is the western satellite complex. Behind it, which we'll see as we go down there, is the eastern one. You would have seen that as you came upon the road this morning. Um, as I say in the handout, people talk about ray domes or golf balls. Hmm. I don't call them golf balls, I call them puff balls. Because they're a fungus. Yeah, that's the fruiting body coming out the ground. But today, because of fibre optics, all the real stuff happens under the ground, spreading great distances across the land. And the, because of the costs and the limitations of satellites, these days satellites pretty much are backup. For fixed sites like this, satellites are only really used to communicate with mobile devices, be that people on phones, or tanks or whatever. Uh, for site, fixed site to fixed site, it's all about fibre optic now. 
and satellites really are only used when the fibre optics are not working for some reason or they're over capacity. But the other problem we have is um, if you look at the Defence in I I Information Systems Agency's website they have become a commercial data broker. They, they broke uh, bandwidth for commercial operators. Now mostly actually that's other military research companies, civilian arms companies who are using their systems. But over that way, about 10 miles, we have a cable and wireless ground station that links to global satellites. And we know from the cable and wireless documentation that has a permanent fixed satellite link to Washington. It's called the Washington Link. And that's there for news agencies who need to pipe their live news broadcast to and from Washington. But DISA probably broke some of that space with them as a backup for this if this is overloaded. And that's the problem. You can come here and look at this. And as I said in my talk yesterday, it doesn't really tell you what the system is and what it's for. You have to get into the politics, the organisation, the bureaucracy of it. Because again, with military, we're talking bureaucracy. And understand, um, why do I hack computer code? Computer <coughs> code is a system of rules. Why do I do law as part of activism? A well, law is a system of rules. It's like hacking computer code, but more fun. And that's how you need to look at this place. There's a set of things. Now, we're at Crowton. This could be anywhere in the world because radomes are radomes, cables are cables. They all work exactly the same. And we know very little, but by studying what is around the site, as I've done for many years, and looking how it's changed, you can map what's happening inside by the bits you can see. Because knowing um, each of those is probably <coughs> half a gigabit of bandwidth, but one fibre optic cable can give you two and a half to five gigabits of bandwidth. So one cable is five of those, potentially. Uh, and that's the thing about communications today, by mapping how much bandwidth is going from A to B, you not only know how, how important a site is, but by how it's changing, how the bureaucracy's emphasis on that site is changing. And that's what's happening with Crowton now. Um, do you remember, remember the black and white photo I showed you last night of this place? It was taken from here. Uh, that was the really ropey old ray dome with the, the, the buckyball dome over the top with the triangular shapes over it. That went years ago and now it's uh, those. That picture last night, it was a nest of radio antennas. And radio antennas, you know, radio is pretty hit and miss. Sometimes, some bits of the year it doesn't work. So you need four or five different antennas to transmit the same message on different frequencies just in case one of those frequencies doesn't work. Um, all that's gone now because this stuff is so much more reliable. And actually it's that change in technology which has enabled drones, network-centric warfare. You couldn't have done that with radio. You can only do it with data and the high bandwidth that that gives you. The, the main road is the national data trunk. They all go up our main roads. And so this place taps into our national data trunk, which gives it, which is how BT or cable and wireless provide the links to this place from wherever else in the world. Now, if you went six miles in that direction, you've got Barford St. John, which is the transmitter annex. They still relay emergency action messages from there, the high frequency communication system still works from there. And that's over the horizon radio communications. And it's a backup. It's probably very rarely used. But in case all of this goes wrong, cyber attack for example, they've still got the good old fashioned analog to keep working. Uh, they're not that stupid. Um, Steam engine. Let's, unless there's any questions, we can have a slow mosey downhill. For the cable, so do they physically have completely their own set of cables that is completely separate from the civil part between here and the US? So their own submarine cable that is only for them? And they have. Um, a, cable to, a cable to replace all those is about the width of a pencil. God. No. Yeah. You get the idea of how dense the data is in that. Now, um, that bundle of cables tr from the national communication. Um, if you look at a picture of London uh, 30 or 40 years ago, when Duncan Campbell was sent to court for taking a photo of the post office tower in London, it was covered in microwave links. They've all gone. 
all our backbone microwave network has pretty much been dismantled because those cables have replaced it and more and they all run up and down that road what this place does is just add a few more cables to that and they will be identifiable because they all belong to one operator or another operator who contracts with DISA to provide them. Now from here they probably go to a switching centre. There's various switching centres. Some of the biggest are in West London. Uh, but there are others around the country, Birmingham. Uh, the big one of course is in Cornwall because that's where a third of the world's internet traffic, a third of the world's data cables come ashore. Uh, pretty much if you're sending data from the Eastern Hemisphere to the Western Hemisphere, it goes through Cornwall. There's very few transatlantic cables going off of Africa because they haven't got the infrastructure to support them. There's a few go from Spain, uh, but the real bundle of cables east and west comes out of uh, the southwest of England. Any more? There's Oh, maybe it's all